You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. There you go. We're going. We're going. Nice. Um, what were we just talking about? We were talking about uh, your fart board. Farts. Welcome back, by the way, all, all <laughs> into the studio, dude. It's good to be back. <laughs> it's yeah. so good to have you back, dude. So much has happened since, uh, dude, yeah. since, I, since we last met. I've done. Good. I've been doing stand up for longer now. Yeah, are you up to a year now? I think a year and a half. A year and it half. was. I started in December of that year, whatever that year was, two twenty two, right? Would that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, the December that I moved here, I started. Mm. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, how you doing? Dude, pretty good. Good? Got up, had a coffee, took a dump, you know, and <laughs> wrote some jokes, and uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, let's, let's. oh, try this coffee. It's kind of lukewarm now, but Matias got some special coffee from, uh, Thailand that he had when he was in Thailand. That's very good. And he bought some crazy mechanism to drink it with, so shout out Matias for the coffee. Yeah, I'm surprised that I had a Thai coffee, and then I usually have a lot more sugar in there, you know. Yeah, but that's like the condensed milk, like yeah. Vietnamese coffee thing. Yeah, I like Thailand. That was a good time. You went to Thailand? Yeah. What? Yeah, my friend Chris, he was teaching English in South Korea, and he had like a two-month break or whatever. Uh-huh. So he's like, well, my uh, girlfriend, now wife, is going to come visit me for like a month, and uh, I'm going to have this other month off if you wanted to come to Thailand, and I was like, yeah, uh, why not, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so we spent most of the time in Chiang Mai, which is like in North. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really cool. I mean, very relaxed, and, you know, more of the partying and stuff is kind of in the south, mm -hmm. but in the north, they're just kind of like, you know, it's just a nice city, and you're just kind of a slower pace of life. And Yeah. Mm -hmm. What What did they think of you over there? Dude, it was so funny. <laughs> Seeing a, a big bearded American. Did you have your beard? Oh yeah, you know yeah. I was. I was even larger too. I was probably like three ninety or something. Wait, they, you know? they make they make them larger? Oh yeah, dude. I was like, <laughs> I was a big, I was a big boy. You know, <laughs> it's funny. My mom has some strange misconceptions about foreign countries. You know, she's like, "Well, are you gonna try to like blend in over there?" And mm -hmm. I'm like, "What? How would I even do that?" You know, but yeah, <laughs> it was great. I mean, I would recommend if you were gonna go to Southeast Asia, it was really nice. Yeah. Know? And yeah. inexpensive. You know? He loves it. I've never been, so I really want to go. It's high on my list of places to go. Oh, you would enjoy it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, you can walk around in the jungles, and there's, you, know, you can see elephants, and you can go to tiger zoos, and a lot, like, a lot of nice food. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of um, expats over there, so you can, <coughs> like, we watched the Super Bowl at like three in the morning in some bar that this English guy owned. You know? Yeah. And that was fun. You know, I would definitely go again. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Maybe we should go together. We yeah. should go do comedy over there. You know, Rick Probably Diaz did. started comedy over there. That guy has such an interesting story, Rick mm -hmm. Diaz from Kill Tony. You know, yeah. he like he's from Spain or something, but yeah. grew up in Brussels mm -hmm. and then started stand up in Thailand, which just seems crazy. It's just a crazy turn of events. Well, I, don't, I feel like Europeans are a little more internationally focused just because of Europe. They think about different countries. We're so like America. Let's all think of, you know. Right. So maybe it's not so unusual for him to go around different places, you know. I guess that makes sense, yeah. It's kind of easier to get around over there, too, right, once you're over oh, yeah. on that side. How far is it? How far? I'm not good with geography. How far is Southeast Asia from, like? It's almost on the opposite side of the planet from the United States. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a long flight, you know. But once you're in there, you can get around pretty easily, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the flights are inexpensive, or you can take a train, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So uh, so, what have you been up to, dude? Are you are you working on Big Fat Cox too yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's people have been crying out for a sequel, you know. So. <laughs> dude, what's really interesting about those jokes is uh, some of them I have memorized too well, and so they've lost some of their their flavor, some of the excitement or something. What do you think that is with? Because I'm I'm at the point now. I'm like like we were talking about. I'm like a year and a half in, where mm -hmm. like you know I have my like my my little set now like my goal for this year which i feel like i accomplished pretty quickly yeah like in the first six months of the year was like i thought it was going to take the whole year to like get a tight five mm -hmm. and get more spots at actual shows yeah and then like i did that mm -hmm. like at six months in, i was like cool the, like i did so now what you know what i mean it's like just keep building i guess yeah but uh but but i'm noticing that a little bit that like sometimes depending on the night or how I feel or if I'm tired and or if there's like it's really hard for me like the other night we we're at Creek and it was really late and nobody was there mm 
mm-hmm. and I went up, you know, and I was I tried a new thing, and then I went into the just rehearsing the material basically, and it's like it's almost like practicing in front of a mirror at that point when yeah. there's nobody in there but a couple friends, you know what I mean? And you're just trying to get the timing down for everything, and it's like it it almost seems like. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel that, like, oh, like, I've said this a million times, mm-hmm. and it's losing its, like, oomph to me. Right. Well, part of that is true, in a sense. I do think when a piece of material is newer, you're drawing it from a certain part of your brain, and it's not quite memorized. And then mm-hmm. when you have it too memorized, it's, like, almost... People can see that you're citing it. So part of our uh, job is to create the illusion that it is the first time, you know. Right. So then I notice that, too, with some of my material that, like, if it's... I've done done it too many times. I'm reciting it, and I'm not living it in a sense. It's not alive in a way. Yeah, and that's a big problem because again, when that happens, it's not. I mean, the jokes are still funny. The, you know, it's all good, but like, it does lose something. Yeah, there's some, and it's hard to really put your finger on it sometimes. But again, with those jokes, I've noticed I can rattle off thirty of them now in a certain order, but it, it's a recital. I'm not actually right. like, the danger is not there. Mm-hmm. The idea that I'm not gonna remember it or something right so as part of the way i do that is i mix up the order or i add new ones you know but that's why people want to do new material all the time because the excitement's still there and it's better yeah but it's, and you're, it's scary right the you're fear, taking a risk it's scary you want the like uh, you know right and if you can't um manufacture that or something then yeah it does uh it's a challenge because again sometimes i'll set down a piece of material for a while and then i'll come back to it and I won't have it fully memorized because it's been a while. And so that actually gives it that life again, you know, whatever that is. I'm sure that's pretty common, though, you know, because you get bored with your material. And then if that happens, the audience sort of notices that somehow. Oh, they for sure do. Mm-hmm. It's weird that that doesn't happen in music the same. Like, right. I mean, I'm sure you're kind of bored of the song, maybe. Like, we, we play some old songs. Like, yeah. when we play a show, like, stuff that we wrote and you know, 2017, released in 2018, have been playing since then. <clears throat> but I still get jacked, jazzed every time I hear, you know. I get fired up as soon as, like, that song hits in. Like, I don't, like, I love the song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, like, if I have a joke that I do, like, I have a joke about my mailbox being broken. Well, that happened a couple of years ago. That problem's been resolved. So, like, yeah. when the problem was still ongoing, I had more fire about it. And now that it's just a piece of memory, it's different. Yeah. It doesn't, I can still use it. I do for like a clean show or something. Mm -hmm. But like, it doesn't have the, I don't, I can't summon the anger about it like I could when it was ongoing. Right. Yeah. So you kind of, maybe, maybe I write songs about things that make me mad. Yeah. And I write jokes about things that are like, make, that I think are funny, make me laugh. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's like that, you know. Like when you write something about the government, you know, you write a song about the government holding you down. You right. know what I mean? You can you can get fired up about that every time, but well, you'll more or less have that feeling for your whole life as long as you don't like right. the government. Yeah. But like if it's about a, an event, if the event's time has passed and you sort of resolved it, then it doesn't have the same pull in a way. That's why I kind of try to write. Like, I, like, dude, I. What do you think about like all the comics? And I mean, I'm not dogging on anybody you mm-hmm. know everybody's out here just trying to get pops and make people laugh and well, sure. have good sets and stay but a lot of people are do the current events thing mm. you know what i mean well, there's and, wrong with that. no no not at all no no i'm not criticizing it um, sure. and and i'm i'm coming from a place of i don't know anything you know what i mean i'm like a i'm a, i'm i'm new here with uh, in this whole thing and so it's like in comedy and, and i'm like but at a certain point like like with the trump thing mm-hmm. just happened yeah, which we can talk about that a little more. I'd be curious to hear your your uh, your take if there's any conspiracy. But but uh, but I heard I I heard a lot of like weird like like weirdly similar takes. You know what I mean? Like it's like everyone's doing the leaning to the left joke or what? You know what I mean? Like a lot. I heard a lot of people try to do that, and it was like, and it's interesting. So for coming from Portland, like you you grow up there, you're or you're, you're you know if you're from there. You're you're used to these current event things happening, and then everyone just talks about it, right? And sure. that and that's kind of annoying. And then it was nice to move here, where the current event thing happened. Everybody kind of talk about it normal, but they're not like so hyper focused on it, or it's not the city isn't hyper politicized, you know. Yeah. But being in the comedy, <laughs> in the comedy, you know, cr- crowd, it's like you kind of hear the same takes sure. on it, and it's almost like a funny version, or people trying to be funny version of like 
the same shit in Portland where everybody's kind of like hyper obsessed with this, fixated on this one thing. Like when it was Hawk Tua Girl, it was everybody was doing a Hawk Tua joke. Mm -hmm. When it was, and then it almost makes, I feel like it makes, for a second, I had a like, oh, well, well, well do I need to, do I need to write a Hawk Tua joke? Mm -hmm. Do I need to write a Trump joke? You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't feel the like, the magnetic pull to go write something about that. You sure. know, I did write a little thing, a take on the Trump thing that I thought was a little different was just like, I thought it was funny that they thought they could get away with it mm. in a, like, you know, a, an age where smartphones and the internet exists. They're just like, it's been 60 years since we pulled this off, but we still got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We got it. He, he won't know what hit him. And then he gets hit and immediately knows, you know what I mean? he's like, knows exactly what hit him a bullet well but i'm just tough. like you know I, it's like that was the only thing i thought was kind of funny about it but well, i don't know it's just i'm like uh like for me when i see everybody writing stuff about it i'm like oh that's what like not to write about then well you're right you I know think, what i mean i think about that well it depends if you're a political comedian or that's true yeah if that's your i mean i saw 30 trump jokes yesterday at the lucky duck okay so by yeah. the by the 31st one i said well, the president's who one got shot in the ear, right? Why does my ear hurt? <laughs> <laughs> but that, but yeah, so like, you, there obviously there's a an advantage to doing something that's topical and current yeah. because it's something everybody's thinking about, and part of our job is to be you know relatable to people, but you know, yeah. But the problem with that is it is a current event, and so once it becomes non-current, it's not interesting. So that's that's the so that's like those jokes have a shorter shelf life. Yeah. But really, also, you have to think, at least in my opinion, they say, you know, who are you? Why are you? Why now? Well, the why now part's answered by that because it's happening right now. But, like, how are you involved in it? Yeah. And, like, what does it have to do with you? And so, to me, those kinds of jokes don't really lend to that for part of stand-up, you know? Yeah. If, if you were friends with Trump or you knew him or someone in your family and you were connected in some way, then it would make more sense. But, like... Yeah. To me, you do it for a couple of weeks and then you got to dump it. Or maybe right. That's not going to be. You're not going to be able to talk about Trump getting shot in the ear in a year. No, it'll be with a, with the fish brain social media world we live in right now. It's just going to go. You know? Yeah, it's already like gone, kind of. Yeah, don't you think? Like, like not really, but it's like I don't know. I feel like you you would almost think that if that happened, we would be. It'd be bigger, a bigger. We deal. would just be more like what the f like. Yeah, I'm still kind of like I'll get high, you know, and every every ten hours I go, this is crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I'm like, oh, you know, those shoes are cool, or it's like whatever. You're scrolling through your feed, you know, and you're like, damn, it is crazy that Trump got shot in the ear and that he barely dodged the bullet. Did you see like the diagram of like the 3D? model of his head moving with like the bullet trajectory line and how his little you know he does those little ticks mm -hmm. that like saved his life like what kind of fucking what movie are we living in right now where like you know this this funny asshole political guy that everyone hates is it does these little tick things and it like saved his life you know he's like hmm, oh hmm, well, yeah and then it, <laughs> What it I, doesn't make any sense. What I find funny about the whole thing is, uh, what would it take to change somebody's mind about which who, who they're going to vote for? It's not possible. It doesn't matter right. what happens now. People are kind of locked in, so I don't know why they're even bothering to have debates and any of this stuff. People have already decided. So, like, to me, it's just absurd, you know. Right. I mean, the only people that maybe it'll affect are people who thought about not voting or something. Right. Uh, but that other makes than sense. That, Nobody's like, I don't know. It's just silly to me. The whole thing yeah. is silly. Could you imagine the State of the Union if RFK gets elected? <laughs> You're just like, people are just like, like halfway through. And I love our forefathers. You know what I mean? It's like, it would be, who knows? I mean, something like anything could happen. That's why yeah. I think it's funny. You know, it's like. Yeah, I, li I mean, I think our our case. I don't really, I'm I'm less political than I ever. I was always a neutral like political person, you know, mm -hmm. where like I just didn't care. But like like my parents grew up and they were kind of like, we don't care. We're in the center, but they always voted Democrat, sure. pretty much, you know. And uh, and for me, it was like, at, by the end of COVID, I was like, I always say that I was like. Uh, 
like I was Republican for a little bit, you know, like like uh, by on accident. I was accidentally because when you're in like a uh, fucking hyper political place that leans one side, you kind of are just like, I hate all of you. So mm-hmm. whatever you don't like, you guys bug me. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna like that thing. Sure, you know what I mean or whatever. And then and then you start hanging out over here, and you're like, mm, this is gross too. You know what I mean? I want to go back here. And then so being here, it's been able to, like, allow me to kind of feel like I'm back in the, like, the real center where, I, where I'm like, I don't like any of this stuff. It's all weird to me. I you don't know, think anybody, and it doesn't change my, you know. I don't know if anybody really gets enjoyment out of politics, you know. I don't know. Some people get a sick enjoyment out of out of it. Or, yeah. or it's like they're hypnotizing. To, it's, like a, it's like a drug. It's like sure. a dopamine thing where, like, people get... They get dopamine from like disagreeing with. It's like a negative excitement mm-hmm. that they get. They right. get fired like, up. Yeah, about like a it. toxic kind of. A, yeah, I mean, there must be some value to it, or people wouldn't do it. Yeah, know? but it does become a part of their identity, and I just am like, eh, it's too bad. Yeah, because it's so time consuming too, and there's always something to get fired up about, you know. Yeah, that's how they. That's how they get you. Well, like I was, uh, you know, I used to work on a cherry farm, you know, and I, you only had AM. <laughs> Yeah, I don't You're know. You're the most interesting. We have to have the weirdest jobs. Well, my my parents do. Uh, <laughs> I used to work on a cherry. They own cherry sorry. farms. My grandpa and my dad, you know. So I used to work on the cherry farm, you know. And you're driving the tractor, and you can only get AM radio, you know. So then you got Rush Limbaugh on the morning, and he's just fired up, you know. So like, I think that's part of the reason why people like it. It's not even that they care about the message per se. Right. They just want to get like. You know, there's nothing going on. There's trees, you know, and, there's, you know, and then you're just like, yeah. You're yeah, driving you know. through the cherry yeah. farm. It's just like, liberals suck. You're like, oh, you know, it's just like, it's just something yeah. to do. You know, it's like, yeah. I need some emotional stimulation. You know, okay, yeah. this will this will do, you know. they Dude, if you ever listen to it, it's so funny because he'd say something. I don't know anything about Rush Limbaugh. But, uh, he's dead now, but he mm-hmm. was a conservative, you know, radio guy. But dude, He was they, like Alex Jones a long time ago, kind of, right? Is that? Yeah, they were sort of in the same I mean, not vein. less comical and whatever, but it's like he was like crazy radical, right? Yeah, he was very on the right, you know. Okay. Like but they they were funny though too cuz he he'd say some stuff and then they'd have a like a bump where they'd be like and that's your new opinion and like <laughs> what <laughs> this is like hypnotizing you but they would do it as a joke but they'd also be like kind of like winking at you like hey, this is yeah, this is you the believe part, this, you know right? this is the line now and i'd just be listening to that i'm like people like this because it's it's entertainment you know and it's mm-hmm. it's like he's like but i'm like man to get that wound up every single day you know that's got to be hard on your heart and just like yeah. you know because you got to get in there and be like, okay, people don't want to hear me just talk. I got to be like fire, you know. I got to, right. and uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, inter- it was interesting. I feel like you could do a fun like parody news show, <laughs> like like uh, like the, the people's opinions on dumb things, like just make up people's opinion. Like people, uh, I'm trying to think of one. Like uh, just have it be all emotion. Because uh, just all the random stuff you do, like oh yeah, you do a lot of random stuff. You know, like people's opinion on the penny. You know, or whatever. Like the like people are people are fired up on both sides about something that they're just not fired up about and then writing a couple of opinions about it. You know what I mean? People about the well, there's actually a lot of controversy around pennies. I don't know if you know. Well because yeah, because again, uh so to for the for the treasury to produce a penny, they lose money on it. Every every penny they is a is a loss. Uh and then the nickel too. So there's people that are coming out and saying we don't need those anymore, you know. And there's always how do they lose money on it? I'm sorry, well, the, I'm the, done with all this stuff. Well, so the cost of producing a penny, like the materials and the labor and everything, mm-hmm. is like three cents. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> and then the, can you look that up for us? Yeah, how much does it cost to yeah. to manufacture a penny? Is that what you would say? Yeah, how so, much does it cost to manufacture a so penny? So they so they lose money on a penny and a nickel, but they make it back on quarters and dimes. <laughs> it's just so stupid. They're literally stepping over a quarter to pick up, or stepping over a nickel to pick up a dime. Like yeah. So whatever. people every year come out and say we don't need pennies and nickels anymore. Let's just have quarters, you know. But then there's other lobbyists yep. who come out and say, yeah. So. Penny costs 3.07 cents to make in 2023. That nickel costs 11 and a half cents. Right. So every time they make a penny, we're paying for it, you know. <laughs> That's the dumbest fucking. If you ever needed a better example of how we're f- just fucked at the core, we're just, everything's so retarded at the core. Right. And so then you would look at this logically and say, well, why can't we just stop doing it? 
What's the argument against it? Against well, the stopping? argument is all these charities will come out and they'll come to Congress and they'll say, well, we're from the March of Dimes and we have the buckets. And if we don't have people putting pennies in there, we're not going to raise as much funding. You know, How much fucking money are they making in pennies? Because people are bringing out change from the change jar yeah, to and, donate. And they see that you know, it's, a, it's a tradition. So they're like, well, if yeah. we get rid of the penny, we're going to lose revenue so it actually yeah. be cheaper for the government to stop making pennies and actually just send them a check you know mm. but we don't because again so that's so that's where politics gets in the way of all this stuff you know? something as mundane as this you know I mean, it's, it's to me this is hilarious this I mean, is hilarious i mean absolutely <laughs> it makes you wonder how much more shit is like, like what else are they losing money on probably all of it you know yeah. i mean <laughs> i mean nobody can stop this you know <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> Eleven and a half cents for a five cent token is crazy. Yeah, I mean, look at that means they're losing two hundred and forty nine million a year or whatever it is. You know, I mean, yeah. per year. You know. That's crazy. Two hundred and forty million a year. Just we don't know how to stop it. We well, just can't the, stop making pennies. Has the government ever been efficient on anything? No. Yeah. Well, they're like we just can't turn off the presses. You know, and then they'd be like, well, these guys are working at the mint. They're going to lose their jobs. You know, and they're, I mean, it's just right. Bizarre. Yeah, it's a ripple effect thing. That's crazy. Well, and plus, imagine the, making pennies. That's a weird job. Making a making a completely useless currency that no one likes. Like if you if you buy chain if you buy something with cash and they give you like you know seventy nine cents back and you get four pennies you're just like, fuck. You well, know, even what am I gonna to, do with these? Even trying to get rid of it is challenging. You know? Yeah. Like when I see the guys uh, asking for change on the, uh, they'll they'll take the pennies and they'll just throw them on the ground. They just don't even want it. So like they've been collecting coins. It's a all decoy day. for the other homeless people so that they they think I pick them they, up, they yeah. waste their time picking. You pick them up. <laughs> That's the best place to find pennies. Just right by the corner. Yeah, guys will just. Throw Can you it. go over why your 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 thought process on on collecting coins again? That's kind of why I brought it up. Oh, because yeah. you're a coin. You're the coin guy. Everyone knows you in town as the coin guy. Right. And you have there's a big joke about this, and I forget. I always forget the like basis of it. Oh, dude. How it started. It's very elegant, I'll tell you. Okay, so what, what I think is funny is I read this book about luck. So they did this experiment, and they had a group of, let's say it was 100 people, and they said, okay, uh, do you identify yourself as a lucky person or an unlucky person? And they would, you know, whatever. And they say, okay, well, the next part of the experiment is going to be in this other building, so we just need you to walk over there. And they'd have them walk one at a time. And then they did is they didn't tell them, but they put a $100 bill on the ground. And so then the self-identified lucky people, almost to a person, would just see it and pick it up. You know? And the unlucky people were just walking past it. And so then they... Hmm. So, one so of it's the, like a mindset is what it was trying to tell you? Right. So they said one of the factors of being lucky is that you are scanning your environment for opportunities. And so they said that's, <laughs> that's like one of the components of being lucky. You know. Hmm. So what I think is really funny is... Picking up pennies off the ground because it's like a failure. <laughs> like it's, it's such a waste of time. It's such a waste. So I'm like taking the component of luck and I'm wasting it on picking up pennies on the ground. You know, so like because you could be being more aware to other things going on. Right, and so now it's actually gone from the point of it's a neurosis because now I won't, I can't not, I can't not, you know. Mm -hmm. And when, you're constant scanning like Terminator, like me, 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 me. Yeah, me, whenever me, I'm me, walking me, around, me, me. I'll just see like the glint of it because like at night you can see them easier because of the lights, mm. and I'll just be like, <laughs> you have a strategy. <laughs> well, no, but during the day you would walk by, you wouldn't notice it because of the way the light is, but then at night when you're walking around, the light will glint off of something, and it's so obvious they're just everywhere. You know? Yeah. So I'll just be picking up. So now I can't walk by and not do it. So I've taken it and turned it into like a neurosis. You know? So like to me, everything about coins is like a failure, especially like. Like anything. what we were just talking about. Right. Yeah. So to me, that's what I always, I'm searching for failures for my jokes, you know. And so this is to mm. me an exercise in failure, you know. Damn. And that is that is deep. That's yeah. elegant. It's so, so that's why people, when I talk about coins all the time, they have this why. Why? Why the coins, Alden? I'm like, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and that's and it, so, uh, yeah, that's stylistically something I really like, you know. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, why? I'm like, well, I can't really explain it to you. But it's one one thing I love about being friends with you is that you always have. There's always a new. <laughs> there's always a new, like, uh, 
I don't know what to call it. It's not an endeavor because endeavors oh, no. endeavors have potential. It's an effort in futility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what I that gives, that's what gives me fulfillment. You know? <laughs> yeah, like like there's always something. It's always a treat. There's always some. So Alden, what's going? What's up with you this week? And you're like, oh, I, I got some. I'm making hummus. I found a new garbanzo bean. I'm like, yes, dude. dude I'll tell you the funniest <laughs> this thing. Is, this is the best. Did, did you ever meet the comedian uh, Ben Howard? You know, uh, uh-uh. uh. Anyways, he's uh, sometimes very irritable, you know, and so Mm -hmm. um, I had been playing a lot of fart noises, you know, (laughs) and uh, he came up to me one time. We're just having a talk and he goes, "Um, dude, what's with the farts? Okay. (laughs) And like he expected. So like he had this idea that like Alden's a dumbass and he's doing this to piss people off. That was like his view of of what I was doing, you know. Okay. So then I actually sat down and I unpacked the whole thing and I said, okay. You know, I play this noise, and there's a subversion of expectations. And I, I went through this right. whole thing. Which we did on the other podcast. Yeah. If you listen to the other podcast, we go into detail right. about the uh, uh, fart tech, about the um, the fart ideology. Yeah, and so after I had unpacked this whole thing, he was like, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> he was impressed. Like, I'm not going to lie, I'm impressed. Right, and so, that's, so there's a lot of things I do like that where, like, on the surface, it just seems like, what is this? But then... You know, I don't have time to explain myself to everybody, and I don't, you know? So, like, to me, that's very funny because on the, <laughs> you're like, why is this Why is this, this? And I'm like, well, I mean, how much time do you have? You know, <laughs> I could tell you all about it, you know, but really I know you don't want to hear all that. You know, you just want to be yeah. like, you know. Well, if you have 20 minutes, uh, I can really impress you with the logic that backs up these farts. Be like, see this thing I'm doing that's useless? I actually am spending a lot of time on it, too. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. But that's what I like that. I like the idea of uh, doing something that's not necessary, you know, and there's a lot of futility in it and like something how that just like really lights my fire. I don't, I don't know what it is. About is, there, it. is there, well, it's just it's funny to you. <laughs> it is very and funny. And so I though. feel like it I feel like it keeps you in a constant state of goof. Yeah. Like uh, the first time I ever heard something like this was uh, Ridley was like having a rough week and he was like uh uh, well, he thought he was, you know, he's always killing it, I think. But I think really you know, great. He's very yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, but he uh, he was he thought he was having a rough week or whatever. Um, and he was like, he's like, dude, I just got I lost my goof this week. Mm-hmm. Like he was stressed out about work and or whatever. You know what I mean? He's like, I lost my goof. I got to get my goof back. And then he like the next day he was he had a good set and he was like, I got my goof back. Dude, that's and important. so it's, but it's like staying. I think about that a lot. It's like, like mojo. Yeah. Like g- just. Like if I'm going out and I'm in a bad mood, it's like I gotta not I gotta watch some some people, sure, and 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 get 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 a laugh and just hear something just so silly and and get my goof back so that I can get up and be silly and be goofy. You know what I mean? Like it's hard to go out if you're not feeling goofy. But like if you've ever read about nihilism and stuff, and they so I like I would identify as an optimistic nihilist, right? Can you describe what nihilism to me is? Because it's one of those words that like it, you hear it a lot in metal music. Nihilist is like a band, or like <laughs> nihil. We are the nihilists, and it's like I don't. I think it's a cool word. I just have I have no idea what it means. Well, just in a simple definition, just the the belief that our lives don't have meaning, you know. Mm. So that's kind of. I mean, there's other. There's more philosophy and stuff involved with it. Okay. But so they um, a lot of people when they they come to that conclusion they get sad you know because they're like well there's nothing i can do that's useful you know and that my life itself is not necessary you know which i think is true but then some people branch off into what's called optimistic nihilism and they think that that's good you know mm. that you don't have you're not being weighed at the end of your by life by some kind of purpose right and like there may or may not be a god who knows I, I don't know but like the idea of the nihilist holds is that our lives ultimately don't have a meaning you know mm-hmm. so t- but then, the, the, and then the optimistic nihilist is saying that there's some beauty in that right like so that, that's where that branches off into depression or just being like well that's fine you know? mm-hmm. but so then they say the antidote to nihilism is absurdity you know <laughs> so that's the only thing so when i can identify so when i do a completely fruitless effort of some kind I'm, it's an exercise in absurdity, you know. So, right. And that's to what, to break up the monotony of the nihilism. Right. Okay. Because I'm like, well, it's fun to just like you know write an article about you know Russia or something, you know. Right. Why not do it? You know mm-hmm. that that's where the difference between a, a nihilist and an optimistic nihilist. They'd say, well, oh god, life is just uh, you know. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so then that's hard to unpack for people because they're like. 
you would think if life has no meaning, that has to be bad. You know, right. Where I take the view that life has no meaning, and that's just great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it is par- it's a paradoxical view in some sense. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that powers a lot of the things that I do. Like even trivia. Trivia as a business does not need to exist. <laughs> not one part of it, you know. <laughs> So when I write a really good trivia question, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> but, like, but again, the whole effort is the business, the show, all of it is useless. Yeah. I mean, we're providing entertainment or whatever. But Well, for you, I feel like the best, the best, what you must love the most about the trivia question is like, see, you know, in stand up, you're saying a joke and you wait, you, you say the punchline, you wait, you give it some time and you see it hit and people go, ah, ha, ha, or whatever. If it's a good joke, if it's a good trivia question, you get to put it out there and see everybody go, fuck. <sighs> or, like, they don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you want to see them in in agony if you're giving them a bad trivia, a rough trivia question. Yeah, you. well, I don't want people to feel that it's hopeless. They'll never figure it out. And I don't want them to say, oh, this is too easy. I want, yeah, I want that struggle of, like, uh, can I can, if I think about this a little, I can kind of, you know, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Well, want you to have them be a little comedic, like, I had one about um, whether or not uh, Viagra or Cialis has a longer, like, life, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, so people laughed about that, you know. Sure, it's and, dick pills. Yeah, and then they have to debate it, you know, and it's fun, you know. So And, and I made some, like, uh, you know, innuendo-type jokes about it after. And so, that, you know, that's that's entertaining. <clears throat> do you ever pull, you ever, like, have, like, a projector screen or something where you can do a little presentation for each trivia question? Because I feel like you would be kind of good at that. Like, if you could do a PowerPoint. Yeah. You know those like cheap Amazon Timu like uh, uh, projector things you can buy and like hook, hook your phone up to. Well, believe it or not, I am doing that. So, oh uh, really? I have this experimental game show that I'm doing. Uh, I'm actually doing one tomorrow at oh, the cool. Dig Pub, and it's called uh, "Who Wants to Win Ten Dollars." <laughs> And so it's a parody of who wants to do it. Yeah, I've got the music going, and then I've got the all the sound effects from the show, but they're cutting into farts, you know, of course. And then, uh, so on the projector, I have screenshots of the show, and those are the questions. So I, t- I went through a bunch of episodes of the show, and I just took screenshots. Yeah. And then I, so then somebody, awesome. so like somebody sit down, and so yeah. you go through 10 questions. So the first question is worth a penny, you know, and then you work your way up to $10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then if they want to use a lifeline, it's just uh okay, you guys want to pull the audience and they just start yelling out what they think is the answer, you know? Yeah. And then uh we were trying to do a phone just dial a random number. That was what it was going to be, but they just went to a bunch of answering machines and stuff, so That would be so yeah. funny if you got a random like a got like uh Rapos Pizza, what's up? What can I do for you? Hey, I'm on who wants to win ten dollars. I need your help, <laughs> Jose, you know, or whatever. It's yeah. Like... And that was why I was hoping, but un- unfortunately it didn't end up working in practice. That's funny. Nobody answers. We just went calls. To, Yeah, they're just like, Oh, scam likely, and yeah, it's probably a stupid game show. <laughs> like, I don't know, you know? That would be crazy. Mom, I'm on I'm on who wants to win ten dollars. I really <laughs> need your help right now <laughs> well just to talk to the person and be like well i mean uh so if you win the ten dollars you know what are you gonna do with it? you know and they're like oh well you know maybe i'll cover part of my tab or something you know? yeah, but- and then there are people yelling for the audience like dude this is the quarter question walk away you know like- <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so it's funny. You know, so yeah. it was a, Cut your losses. And it's very, you know, it's just light entertainment, you know? That is really funny. Yeah. So we did one last month. I didn't have very good attendance, but I'm hoping to have more on it this time. So Where is it at? The Dig Pub? It's at the Dig Pub in Cedar Park. Yeah. Okay. But I may end up taking it around. I mean, I think it's a kind of a viable. I think it's funny. You know, people like game shows, you know? Yeah. And, and I got to. The trivia hosting is not that far off from game show hosting, and but. it's it's a it kind of goes back to your uh, your optimistic nihilist absurdity uh, explanation, where like it's it's a waste of everyone's time. Oh, you're you're 100%. actually taking your you're picking up coins thing and you're forcing it on everyone else that's in being involved because you're like it's so it's so not worth anyone's time to sit oh, here not at all but is but we're gonna have fun with it well and i brought a, a jar of change that i had collected from my walking around so like i you're told bringing people dirty that. dirty six street quarters yeah people are like where did you get all this change like oh i got it from my walks you know and they're just like <laughs> You know, so that, but uh, but again, they had as much. I mean, obviously, winning a million dollars would be way better. But I feel like they got as much enjoyment out of doing it like that, you know, than doing it like in the in the real show. It's really funny. So that's yeah. I was like, well, that we could do that right here. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. 
Oh, and man. the questions are they are they inappropriate and funny as well? I imagine. No, they're just whatever was from the show. I literally took screenshots of episodes, so mm. I would just like have a, that come across the screen, you know. Yeah. And then when they'd win, I'd hit the, you know, noise that they won or whatever, you know, and I'd go to the next one. And so yeah, it was, but I think for the future, I'm gonna. I have. I found a. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire question generator so i'm gonna have like silly oh, cool. pictures in the back you know? nice mm. it'd be cool if they did one with ai and you could be like dicks like just give me a bunch of you know what i mean give me a bunch of who wants to be a millionaire questions dicks oh, that'd be super easy. oh yeah i could be like uh you know lengths you know like girths mm -hmm. you know well i can um i have a like a database of multiple choice that i can draw from so i just gotta add it to the image you know? okay cool mm. where'd you how'd you come up with that idea I don't know. You it know. came to me in a dream. <laughs> well, I was thinking there's this place up north of Austin called a, a Game ATX, you know, and I thought mm -hmm. this would be kind of fun, you know. And then, well, so Corey asked me to do bingo up there, and I found out that to do bingo you have to have a license in Texas. That's very strict. Or you either have to be a nonprofit or, um, you know, have this license. <laughs> that, that's also really funny to me that they have the yeah. they have their fingers in the bingo. <laughs> Yeah, the gambling laws are very strange here, you know. So then I had this kind of in the back of my mind, and I was like, well, what about doing this as a show? He's like, I don't know. If you think it'll be fun, you know, I, was like, I think it will be fun. Mm -hmm. And we did have a good time on that first one. Yeah. So I was like, this will be good. And I'm like, well, this is a format that's like in like hundreds of countries. Right. I think I could do a version of it that would be entertaining, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I reinvented the wheel or anything, but I was like, I could probably do it well enough where it would be fun. And then that's what we're doing, so... Oh, yeah. Because like you say, like one of the things you told me when we met, is like sometimes you just got to send it, you know? Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if this will work or not, but I'll just go for it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, that's kind of how I try to be with the studio. If somebody has an idea, you know, it's like if I have time. Now I don't really, and so oh yeah, they have to pay to use it or whatever, you know? But, but still, I'm down to help. If you're driven about an idea and you want to get a studio i'll help for i'll give you a, a deal you know compared mm -hmm. to the other places but it's like um yeah like you had that idea i don't know uh yeah, it never really ever... worked out you know but <clears throat> well I was like... we didn't keep doing it that's yeah. the problem and somebody told me recently that if you're if you make it to like episode 13 of your podcast you're in the top one percent of podcasters mm -hmm. which is crazy because so many people give up yeah you know and and it makes sense. I mean, it's you know, we don't we don't have a ton of uh, views or subs yet, but I feel like we're having I'm having a lot of fun doing it, and so I'm just kind of like. And for me, it's like if you look at any successful podcast, that nothing happens for a hundred episodes. It's like they oh, have yeah. to get you have to like get past that hundred episode. Well, you have to build up your expertise. You have to think what works and what doesn't work. So when you yeah. go into you get better. I mean, uh, I. I had a series of sketches I did called uh, Boredom Busters, mm -hmm. and I just made like a hundred, and they're like unwatchable to me now, <laughs> you know. But I was like, this is how I learned how to. What is important for a sketch? It's got to be quick, you know. There's certain mm -hmm. angles, there's different things about how do you do, you know, do the editing and all that. So like now when I sit down and make a sketch, I'm much faster. I have a better eye for it, you know. So I learned all that by having that huge pile of just like experimental stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're still on YouTube, but like nobody watched them. Yeah, but I was like, I learned a lot from doing that. You know? Yeah, and I think the same with podcasting. You got to be like, well, maybe it takes a hundred episodes to figure out, you know, what your angle is or what you know, whatever it is. You know, sometimes it's not like obvious in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you you got to keep evolving it. The idea that you had, I thought, I still think it's good, but you, there's something I was like, who wants well, to watch this? You know? I yeah, like, I mean, I had we had a fun time, you know. Yeah, explain to people what the concept was. Well, the idea was that you would watch. You would play a board game with somebody, and then you would do commentary of the board game you just played as if it was a sporting match. You know? Yeah. And so, uh, oh, you know, there he goes. Uh, yeah, you well, know, moving the chess piece. Well, part of the problem is Audrey didn't know how to play Othello, so that mm -hmm. was kind of an obstacle, you know. And then I wanted to have random board games, and I was like, that was a mistake, you know, different mm. things. Like, yeah, I had more views when I was doing the Connect Four stuff because it was more like, what was the Connect Four stuff? 
Well, I would just have other comedians play me in Connect Four, and I would just make little clips, and I just threw it up on uh, reels. Oh, okay, you know? okay. So it was. Quick. I remember that now, actually. Yeah, and I used a lot of the sound effects from um, Super Smash Brothers, so it had like some pop to it, you know. Yeah, was it like the punching? So <laughs> yeah, when he gets hit with the bat, you know, that's what I'd play after I beat somebody in one of the rounds. <laughs> the screech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there too, I found that people don't want to watch you play Connect Four. But what they do like is the reaction of somebody losing is interesting. So I would basically fast forward through the game and I'd just get to the reactions. Okay. So people found that part interesting. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Mm. You're just experimenting with the human mind, Alden. Well, you know, that's how you've come up with stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not obvious in the beginning <clears throat> what you should do, you know, especially if you're going to try to make something that's novel, you know. Mm -hmm. You just got to, like, try out some stuff. Yeah. Mm. But that's true of a lot of things. That's not just comedy. I think that's true of music and painting and, yeah. you know comic books and i mean look at some of the old marvel superheroes i mean now we just look at them like they're antiquated but like that's how they got to where they are currently i mean what do you mean by that well i was like what i was reading some of the old like fantastic four like their background and stuff and it seems so like simplistic and now when you look at the current superheroes they have like more fleshed out motivations and backstories and they're more interesting but before they're just like, well, this guy is stretchy, and <laughs> this guy gets on fire or something. And yeah. Okay, well, let's now they're a team, you know, and so like, <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> like, yeah, she could turn invisible. Okay, well, that sounds pretty good. You yeah, know? this guy's made of rocks. You know, and back then that worked, right? Because that was novel. There's like, oh, these people have superpowers. Like, right. even like now I, you're like, tell me why. Yeah, why but, does he have the superpower? Like, what does this have to do with like you know some th you know it's got to be more tied in. I think that's where DC is different than Marvel. Is like the Marvel characters they have like more real human problems. Even Steve, uh, they would yeah. say that's where the. I'm not a big superhero guy, but we, but but yeah, I get what you're saying. Like they're more grounded in not in reality, but they're more grounded in like human problems. Yeah, like Bruce Wayne was a rich guy that was like sad because his parent he was mad because his parents got killed or whatever yeah and, and that part's true but like the way that they do their world is a lot more abstract it's not as tied into human like if you read the x-men they have a lot of problems that are like very very human problems i think mm -hmm. so that makes it more relatable i guess okay mm -hmm. makes sense. um so you've been making hummus is that your new is that your new thing that you're doing well i've been doing that for years oh okay Dude, that's funny Never had too. Hummus. Oh, we'll have it after this. I we should just have some right now. Bust it out. You want to bust it out? Yeah, just right. bust it out. Dude, this has been a long. Process. I'll bring some over to you, Matthias. Yeah, dude. I got a. I like your little Naruto. Dude, I'm a big Naruto head. Are you? I've never seen an episode of that. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I don't. I can't do anime. I'm not really into anime. I don't know. I don't know why. That's a quiet taste. Here's I'm... a spoon for you, and then here's uh, some cucumbers. If you want to dip it. Yeah, it's pretty good. So there's a funny story about the hummus. It's like gelato. Yeah, it's a little thicker than I normally make it. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think I put a lot more garlic in this time. You know? Yeah, pretty good. Let's get some ASMR crunch. We won't get the lip smacking, but just really. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad. That was good. I'll bring. I'll bring you one too. Mm-hmm. For people that are like, oh, wow, they're just going to fucking eat hummus on the show. Yeah, bitch. This should just be the rest of the podcast. This is my fucking, yeah, we'll, we, we'll, we'll sit here silent. You want to have an attitude about it, we'll fucking sit here silently and eat <laughs> and eat, eat hummus. Let's just do it for like two seconds. Let's people, just. People wish they could have our lives, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is entertainment right here. Oh, yeah. It's really good hummus. There's probably oh, somebody out there who would masturbate to this. Good, yeah, probably. Yeah, so this is a funny story. So, like, I wanted to, um, you know, start eating hummus because, you know, it's healthy for you and it tastes good, you know. The problem is I'd buy a serving of it and I'd eat it in, like, one sitting, you know. It's, like, six ounces or something. And it'd be kind of expensive, you know. So <laughs> I was like, what? You're just eating a whole tub of hummus in one sitting? Yeah, like, you'd get one about, you know, this size and it'd be, like, four or five bucks. And I was like... Man, I just can't, I can't be spending four or five bucks a meal, you know, on something. So I was like, well, I wonder how hard it would be to, um, to make it. And, um, so then I, I wrote an article about it on, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know if you've ever seen my blog, but uh, I have one called uh, The Sick Desire for Savings. <laughs> <laughs> is it just about pointless shit? No, it's, yes. yes yeah, it is, but... yeah, wait, can you pull it up for him, team? Let's, oh, plug, yeah, his, let's yeah. plug his blog. <laughs> maybe you could read us. Maybe you could uh, kind of just summarize a couple articles for us. Oh, sure. Well, we can talk about the hummus one. It's pretty good. <laughs> hum they call it hummus manufacturing. That's why I call it. sick desire of what? Uh, it's a sick desire for savings. Yeah, and it's a blog there. I'm going to load another marijuana bowl for this oh, yeah, one, dude. Go ahead, dude. Uh, you don't smoke weed, do you? No, I don't. Yeah, I used to a little bit. But let me see. How would I get there? Um... It's on Blogspot. Do you have a... Oh, you don't have an iPhone. You're one of those. It's on Blogspot. Maybe type in Alden Schaub. Or uh, maybe it's uh, Frank N. Frugal. I was doing <laughs> is that, that your alter that ego? That was my pen name. You know? What is it? Frank N. Frugal. Frank N. Frugal. Uh, like, Man, I wish I liked writing like that. Is Do you think that you have to just... Is that one of those things like working out where you have to do it to like get... You know oh, how like... Go to that link bio where it says the mob shop. There you go. Yeah, I do think you have to do it. Um, there should be on there. Uh, is it on there? Oh, yeah, Sick Desire for Savings. There you go. Yep, there we go. Um, but before we go into this, nope. though, do you think do you think it's that writing is like, because, you know, like, you're like, man, I'm like so tired. I don't want to work out. I don't, you know, ugh. like that attitude that, that you have. And then you go and and start doing it. And then you're kind of like, reading stuff about it and then you're like how do i do better workouts how do i eat better you know what i mean and then it starts to kind of like you start to get into it and kind of get nerdy about it but you have to like go for like two three months straight to get to that point is that the same thing with with like writing and writing blogs and stuff because i just like don't want to sit it feels like the same thing like I, it's hard for me to just like i don't well, so sit down and write and it's then then you think because i don't have that drive to sit down in front of the keys and write does that mean I'm not a writer? Because you wouldn't say that with work, with exercise. Oh, I don't. I'm not an exerciser. I don't have right. the. I don't have the magnet magnetic yearn to just go pick up the barbells. I'm so therefore I'm not an exerciser, and I won't. I guess some people say that, but you wouldn't. You that wouldn't be uh, true to say like with writing. You wouldn't. You know. I, I would say I heard a quote from somebody. They said I don't like writing, but I like having written. You know, oh, yeah. and it's same with working out. But I do think it's like it is a muscle similar to working out or doing stand up or any of these things. And it is something you should do regularly if you're going to do it. Because mm -hmm. like, well, I had an opportunity. I saw that somebody from Big Laugh had posted that they're looking for writers for some show that they're doing. And so I responded and I said, hey, I would be interested. And they go, OK, well, now you need to we're going to have you fill out, do this packet. So they had me write a bunch of topical jokes, and they had me write an uh, interview, and they had me write an interview sketch, you know. So, like, I didn't have to look up what a topical joke is, you know. I had written hundreds of topical jokes, so I was able to do it in about an hour, you know. Mm -hmm. Where if you're not in shape, if you will, writing mm -hmm. shape, that might have taken you days, you know. Right. Where I was able to just knock out, like, ten jokes, ten jokes. Like, the, the they gave you a headline, and it was, um, there's going to be Gaddy's Pizza locations inside of Walmarts. And then from that, you have to punch it up. You have to start writing the jokes. So I was like, okay, well, what's funny about that? I was like, well, they're going to staff all their locations with uh, current Walmart employees that are on their lunch break. You know, and then, so that would be like one of the possibilities, you know. Mm -hmm. And like that was fun for me because, again, I get to exercise my expertise, you know, or like uh, demonstrate mastery. It's just like old ladies and ex-convicts serving you pizza with like the, with like the, uh, reflective vests on and shit yeah or i said um you know they're not legally allowed to call it pizza <laughs> so they they have to call it oral entertainment you know <laughs> That's pretty good. but i that, i repurposed that from a different joke and then like yeah. i was like well the, all the ingredients are going to be 100 percent locally sourced from the walmart freezer aisle you know and it's like <laughs> locally sourced Right, so like, so I, uh, you know, but, silly. but if I wasn't I like, like in shape, writing in shape, it would have taken me forever, you know. But right. So, so that's where the advantage is, like, if you're doing it regularly, then you can sit down and just like, even like I got in the uh, sidecar Junkaroo. I don't know if I was telling you that, but what is this? Oh, it's a local magazine, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, um, they were looking for writers, you know. I met a couple of the editors, and I just said, you know, I used to write for the Weekly Wiper, and I really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the Weekly Wiper. Oh, you know, uh, Gage Moreau, he used to do the Weekly Wiper here in town. Huh. It was a humor zine. It was like a little magazine that he would uh, distribute. That's awesome. So many people doing 
cool little things that. And so I was like, man, I'd like to write little articles. You know, I used to read uh, Mad Magazine, you know, so then um, he would pay me like 20 bucks. Well, I was in the writer's pool, first of all. So he'd suggest a headline, and then he'd pick one that he liked, and he'd write an article. So I ended up writing like 20 of them for him. Nice. And what were all, some of the topics that you're... Oh, I would say um, minimum wage job accidentally listed as opportunity. You know, that would be like the headline. <laughs> <laughs> or like... Uh, Putin's got conscripts, you know, he's got to use game shows to recruit because they're having trouble getting new guys in there, you know. Mm -hmm. Or I wrote a review of the McDonald's on Old Torf, you know, from the perspective of a homeless person. <laughs> you know, like that's actually one of the ones that got in here. So like I sent them the articles I wrote for the Weekly Wiper as like a portfolio piece. Mm. And they were like, dude, these are great. We'll just put a couple in. And I was like, oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. And they paid you for it? No, they didn't pay me for that. Oh, one. okay, cool. But I was like, no, that's pretty cool. Can you read a little bit of the of the oh, review yeah. from the Junkaroo show? Show the camera, your camera, the Junkaroo again. Yeah, so this is the uh, sidecar Junkaroo. This is a local Austin magazine, you know, comedy, art, and stuff. And so the ones I wrote here, I can read a little excerpt for. It me. actually looks really cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing. I can read a little out of McDonald's about East Altor. For the other one I wrote was a uh, natural gas chugging the new Tide Pod challenge. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Let's do. I want to hear the review of the McDonald's from the perspective of a homeless person. Okay, here it is. So the guy's name was uh, Fast Freddy, and uh, he gave the Altorf a three out of five. He said, uh, I was skipping down Altorf, feeling euphoric after standing in the 107 degree heat panhandling. I collected $35 in paper money and $8.35 uh, in coins and 17 in Venmo. <laughs> So I threw the coins away with the gross food people handed me. And, uh, you know, <laughs> who needs gluten-free, vegan, locally sourced anything when you can eat at McDonald's? They use the finest food technology to maintain flavor. Or, I'm sorry, mainline flavor directly to your brain. <laughs> I wish you would do Fast Freddy's voice. I don't know what it would be. I had to come up with something. Like, I Give it some rasp and some... Like, uh, I decided to wash yeah, up. Yeah, there we go. But the bathroom was locked. Uh, this yes. location was so archaic. It had separate men's rooms. <laughs> I asked for a code, but I was told it was for customers only. I said, I am a customer. They told me, <laughs> they told me to lower my voice. So that's how you want to play. I whipped out my hot wad of paper money and ordered four McGang Bangs and a nice frappe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a McGang Bang Dude, is? Dude, I'm, 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 I'm so... Believe, I'm believing Fast Freddy so much right now. Like you're selling it this right guy's now. Legit, I tell you. They looked at me like I was homeless. <laughs> she didn't know about the secret menu. McGangbang is a chick McChicken jam between a McDouble. <laughs> the manager came over and asked me to lower my voice again. <laughs> I repeated my order. <laughs> he said he was calling the police. This dummy forgot they'd been defunded. The other customers yelled at me to leave. So I yanked out my rusty shank. The man behind me revealed a pistol holstered in his fanny pack, so I knew it was time to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I spit on the floor and left to go urinate on the building. <laughs> yeah, worst experience at McDonald's. Still, everyone should know the secret menu. You know, three stars. <laughs> so that was so fun, you know, and I was like... Did I ever read you my McDonald's review? No, let's hear it. From, uh... From, uh... <laughs> Uh, we were starving on tour. Fuck, where were we? I think we were. It was a. Uh, it was in Grand's Rap Grand Rapids McDonald's. Can you can you search for it on here? T search. Oh, Grand uh, Rapids, Michigan. No, not Grand Rapids. I'm thinking of another something like that. A Great Falls, Montana. Is that a place? Great Falls, Montana, right. McDonald's. There's like it's a small town. There should be one. I don't know which. Uh. There's only three, right? Is that it? Actually, if you, right. if you log Here. into your profile, you can uh, go oh, right yeah, to your Oh, yeah. It reviews. should be on there. Go. Maybe you can go to my reviews. How do you do that? Maps? Uh, Here, click see. Maps, T. We're going to find this. Because I, wrote, I, I tried to write some poetry. Uh, can well, you? Where's my reviews? Maybe in the over here in the bars? Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a, um, I'm a level seven local guide here in Austin. Are you? No. Yeah, I've rated uh, 300 Chase Go, Bank branches. Are these my reviews? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. Uh, 
There should be one for keep going. It's a little old. Can you search? Oh, no, you can't search. Um, see, these are like places I've been, I think. Go to, that's contribute. Go to reviews. Click reviews. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah, this is these are my there reviews. Go, found it. Okay, right. you got it. <clears throat> Let me tell you. Let, so we're we're on the way, and and they they it's like so close to closing, and it's one of those. It was a mixture of like they did make the food so well mm. when they when they didn't have to do that. Like they could have. We were the last order. They were like, I guess you know what I mean, or or, or like the, you know in their heads they were like, fine, let's help these last guys out. And we're starving. We've been driving all night from like fucking Fargo, North Dakota, or something. And uh, it was the only thing open. We were starving, and it just hit. You know when the McDonald's just fucking hits, dude. Mm. You know, and it wasn't just thrown together. And so it, we were just like, uh, it was unbelievable at that point of tour. It was very like the end of the road, you know, mm. the end of the the trip. And we were just we were desperate, and they came through. <clears throat> and so I wrote this nice review for those guys, and I said. We rolled into this McDonald's at the buzzer, and we were the last order of the night. The food we received was nothing short of artwork. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this is the it's... best McDonald's I've ever been to. That's how it's McDone, folks. Dude, that's pretty good. Well, I know the <laughs> feeling, you know, when everything's it's, going on. Sorry, that was, a, that was a little bit of an, un, uh, it was an uneventful uh, review. It wasn't, you know. Very yeah. funny, but it was just honest. That's Dude, just it's my true. It was, that was my McDonald's. Story. I've been that time of night where you're just everything's going wrong, and then you just bite into that fucking McGang bang, and you're like, "Damn, this is this is a little slice of heaven." Yeah. Do you have any funny reviews on uh, Google Maps? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go over any of them? <laughs> you can well, actually, a bunch of them I had to delete. So uh, what uh -oh. it was is uh, I used to be a favor driver, you know, uh -oh. and I'd get pissed because these places they hate the favor drivers, you know. So I went to VIA three one three Pizza, which is mm -hmm. uh, got a location in South Austin, and um, you know it's slow because it takes a long time to make that kind of pizza, you know. Yeah, but I was just furious, you know. <laughs> So I wrote. You them were picking a, an order up. Yeah, and they told me it was going to take an hour, and it ended up taking like an hour and a half or something. And so, like, I literally sat down and wrote a six-page review <sighs> for them about how bad, but it was all very silly, you know. Right. But you got to start off with like a reasonable thing to like hook people, mm -hmm. and then you start just getting off the rails about <laughs> all these hypotheticals and stuff. So, like, <laughs> but now what I do is. Um, <laughs> So I had a problem with Chase Bank, okay? They were charging me uh, $12 a month for my checking account, okay? And I didn't want to pay it, you know? So I would go in there all the time, and I'd say, you know, hey, I don't want to pay this, you know? Hmm? This it? Oh, yeah. No, this is a different one about Chase, I think. What is that one? That's about trying to return the coins. No, but what I do is I go on Google... And I would say, uh, $12 a month? No. And I would do that as a review for all the local branches. Mm -hmm. So I've reviewed over 300 Chase Bank branches <laughs> with one star, you know, and they all say the same thing. I'm not paying $12 a month for my free checking account. It's just you know? copy and pasted. Yeah. And so now I've got, I'm like a level seven guide or whatever because I reviewed so many, but that's what all So many say. Chase Banks. Yeah. And then also I would review the ATMs at the branch too <laughs> because they're separate. So I had two. So some ATMs only have one star. If you weren't you. You realize that if you weren't you and doing this out of pure comical enjoyment, right? And you weren't a comedian, you would be a fucking psychopath. That well, is yeah. psychopathic behavior. <laughs> well, sometimes I you wonder, I mean? like, if your friend, if you're, if you saw a guy that was doing that, you'd be like, Jesus Christ. Well, thanks, but you're doing it for fun. How many times do the banks get reviewed? Probably not that often. But imagine no. there's some bank manager. And he's in a Chase bank, and he gets called into his office, and he's like, hey, we got this bad review. Like, what is this? And it's like, oh, this is just a troll or whatever, you know? And they're like, well, I don't know. He seems like. <laughs> yeah, because you write him kind of smart. <laughs> so, like, that's a. But also, that person doesn't have the power to affect the change in policy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, it's even funnier to me, you know, because they just have to kind of be like, oh, what is this? You know, like, well, and it might bring them, it might at least bring them a smile that day that this is ridiculous. Like, who is this guy? I've never even been into most of And they of click them. on your profile and you've reviewed all the Chase Banks. It's just all Chase Banks. <laughs> Can we find it? Can we find it on yeah, Google? Is absolutely. it just Alden Shop? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it might be uh, Derp Klaus, but let me see if it's, uh, yeah. is it? I can look it up real quick if it's mine or. Um, I don't know how to search people. Me neither. Maybe you can't? 
I think you can. Um, let me make. Oh, what do you have? Jake's Banks near me. <laughs> See if you can find one. So they all have a review. Dude, so many of them do. <laughs> well, let me get my. Um, how did you go into the thing where you were sharing? Go to the lowest. Go to the lowest uh, one star. There's only one one star review. <laughs> it's you. Profile. No, Darren Rush. Oh, here we go. Alden Shab Local Guide, uh, level five. And then, uh, yeah, so just go to type in. See if you can type in Alden Shab. It's just your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, it's over the S there. No, these are like locations we're searching. We'd probably have to log into mine or something, but. Well, no, because you can click on someone's profile on here and see what they've reviewed. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Alden like... Shab, Google reviews, maps or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I should put it on. You my have view. great search. All your search stuff pulls you up really quick. It's well, that's cool. that's good. I that have is a good. Huge, You're the I have a big net, you know. Um. Maybe do like Alden Shab Google reviews local guide or something. Wait, I could send you the link. How about yeah, that? send just air or yeah, just text me the link and I'll airdrop it. Yeah, yeah. But it is crazy that it's crazy that you've uh, it's crazy that you've uh, <laughs> written so many reviews for Chase Bank, dude. Well, again, I thought it was like an effort in futility, you know, because again, yeah. but I but I do feel better, you know. I kind of feel like I got my my. Um, my anger out about it by doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a... I mean, it's so funny to me that they were even charging for that. For having a bank account? Yeah, so the idea was when I signed up for this checking account, it was free, you know? And then all of a sudden they decided, well, there needs to be fees, you know? And then I was like, well, I don't want that. And they're like, well, this is how it is now. And I'm like, is it? Because <laughs> I'll go to a different bank, you know? Yeah. And then... They'd be like, oh, well, we can rescind it, you know, this time. Yeah, there you go. So if you go down. You're the reason that people go, don't read reviews. Don't worry about it. I am it. the reason. <laughs> you are, you are. I've got a couple legitimate ones. Oh, there too, we but, go. Yeah, $12 a month for my free checking account. I'm about to hold you to account for stop <laughs> stealing my money, you know. Slowest ATM I've ever encountered. Yeah, so a bunch of them are like that. You know? mm -hmm. They keep going. Yep, Chase ATM. $12 a month? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that one was a good one yeah keep going there's a bunch more i don't know if they get yep chase bank there you go chase bank yeah. <laughs> every month it's 12 dollars a month for the privilege of having a checking account it doesn't cost you 12 dollars a month to steal my money i'm going to switch to an internet bank if this does not end soon <laughs> you're just like being a karen about 12 dollars 300 times well, and that's what I think so funny about it because, like, most normal people, if they had pre were presented with the situation, they'd be like, "This is a small amount of money. I don't care," or mm -hmm. "I don't like the policy. I'm going to switch banks." I've decided to do this third thing where I just like have it be an open-ended problem, and I just constantly <laughs> complain about it because I think that's really funny. I would like the policy to change. I do. Think <laughs> one day, that. one day, it will change. It'll just, not because of you, but it'll, it'll just change, and then you can take credit. Then I'll for be it. like, oh, I'm vindicated. <laughs> yeah. you know? But this is fun, you know. So I, no, and I fun. have a whole bit about it, you know, where I talk about the futility of what I'm doing, you know, mm -hmm. and like, because this is not going to change the policy, you know. Why don't you take my blood to you vampires? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them. Well, what I really find fun about this as a bit is um, I'll start doing the bit. I'll start talking about that I'm doing this. And people, see, it's cloaked in the, the uh, frame of a joke. And so people are like, oh, that's funny. And then at a certain point, it dawns on them that I'm actually doing it. And that's where the turn happens. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. now I've got them. Mm -hmm. Because then it changes the whole context of what I'm doing. Yeah. Because at first they're like, oh, he's just joking. And then it's like, oh, he's really doing that. <laughs> he's like, going <laughs> home and spending his time on the computer doing this. <laughs> so I, I just find that so funny, you know. I think I was with you one time when you were leaving a Google review. I think we were at Anderson Mill Pub, and I was like, what are you doing over there? Dude, it's fun. And you're like, I'm, I'm doing a Google review for something probably for fucking Chase Bank. Dude, I used to do it like one a day, and I got tired of it, but I was like, I should do more of them. They're fun. Yeah. All right, let's go back to your blog. I want to, do oh, you have yeah. any, is there any things from the blog that you think would be well, we extra should, funny that we should pull up? We should pull up the hummus one. That would be fun. 
Which yeah, one? It's called a hummus manufacturer. Oh yeah, the hummus one. I don't know how you could. Uh, let's see. How I you scrolled scroll. past it. Really. Just oh, do. Yeah, yeah. You call, could also do Control F and just type in hummus. Well, I think it's broken up into um, pages. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here it is. Okay. So the idea was hummus is a little too expensive. So what would it take to make it myself? But I got to figure out the cost where I would break even on the batch if I include the equipment and the cost of the goods, you know. Mm. So I made a chart. You can go down to the chart there a little bit. So I found out my break even batch. So if I made 11 batches of hummus, I could, uh, that'd be my break even batch. So I would have amortized all the equipment, which was the um, food so processor. This is for selling the hummus or what you would have spent on hummus? Right. So like, um, if I make 11 batches on the 12th batch, I can make it cheaper than what it would cost me to buy it at the store. <laughs> so, like, that's like going to buy the hummus anyways. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like, so that reason it starts at $30 is because that was the cost of the food processor. Okay. So, if you amortize that across all of the batches and spread out the cost, at that point, I'm now making it cheaper than I can get it at the store. <laughs> so, that was the whole like. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to. You... You could just go to the store. We have to go through buying equipment and making eleven batches of hummus for it to before, be worth it before it becomes like profitable. Right. In the because sense people are like, "Oh, I'll just make it myself." But it's like that's it's rooted in the idea that like people want to do stuff themselves. But it's like it's just more efficient to go get it. And that's just the cost of the um, food processor. That doesn't cost mm -hmm. the time that it talk or the um, so. This is with materials and everything. So that'd be the garbanzo beans and the garlic <laughs> and whatever else you know. So that's funny people don't consider that when you're going to do something like this, you know, you have to do enough of it where you actually get to the price break. You know? Right. But is the article worded from a point of like, look at all the money I saved? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, but all of the articles are like that. So what the idea is that, like, I want to save money so badly that I'm willing to do things that are illogical. <laughs> and that's the whole idea. It's a sick desire for savings. Okay. That's, that's a great. That's great. Right. And to me, that's an exercise in failure because, again, most people are not willing to go through these kinds of hoops to mm. save money they, because they're logical, you know. Like, I have one about buying a cell phone online and how that seems easy on the surface, but then you've got to, like, go to the place, get it, them to put the SIM card in. It doesn't fit. You know, you got to change it. And most people are, again, they're not going to go through all that, you know, to mm -hmm. save, like, $100 or something. Yeah. But I am because I have the amount of time, and I think it's funny, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, so, like, this is probably the 80th batch of hummus I made or something. <laughs> So again, this is like maybe your house is just covered. It's like a hummus business. You well, have a ton of equipment everywhere. You're like, so I got a bigger machine. I did look into that actually, but uh, there's these cottage industry laws that prevent it because it needs to be refrigerated. Mm. If I was making pickles or something, I could do it. Yeah. So to me, this is very like illustrative of how I do a lot of things. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah, funny it to me. But it like, is. Is this your most recent project? Your most recent project? Oh, no, this has been a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I mean the hummus. Oh, um, I guess. Yeah, because I used to make my own stuff. You got the coins, you got the hummus. Yeah. Well, lately I've been doing those roasts. I guess that's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. You fucking murdered oh, roast battle you. the other night. Dude, Dude that, you should have well, been there. Dan and I had a very good one. You know, That was really... You got a standing ovation. <laughs> what was it for again? It was for something dumb. Oh, well, okay. So I'll Oh, there you, was... Yeah, give I'll, us the... I'll tell you the joke, but... Dude, it was really a, a really old Shout out to Dane Lyons. Dude, Dane did a fantastic job. He's got a lot more. And Adam Lucky for hosting Roast Battle at Creek in the K. We love you, Adam. Oh, yeah, dude. He's giving me a lot of opportunities for that because that's He's like cool. my fourth one or something. But no, um, so Dane came out, and before the roast even started, he fucking hit me with a real banger. You know? Which doesn't technically count. Right. But it was like we we're kind of getting the temperature of the crowd, and mm. they were just like lunatics. You know, they right. were just ready. You know? So then. Um, so he threw this joke out at me that was like, Alden hosts trivia for a living. Um, I got a question for you. What's a morbidly obese and loves hanging around uh, the Golden Corrals, you know? Mm -hmm. So I turned to the crowd and I just go, uh, Mrs. Lyons, you know? <laughs> People just fucking went <laughs> yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like of, his, his wife or whatever is the joke. And <laughs> dude, people, it was a standing ovation in Creek. And the, Alden just looks at the crowd and drops one singular Mrs. Lyons. Well, but it was really funny, too, because he had that one joke he did prior was so good. I think right. in people's minds, they're like, there's no oh, way he he's can. done, you know, yeah. and then when I dropped that, it went back the other way. And so then it was like, 
oh my god, this is really going to be. And it be... hadn't even started yet. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, these people are nutty, you know. So I've never been in front of a crowd like that where they're just so like ready. That to was go. one of the most rambunctious. Yeah. Well, and all the, the other comics were coming off the roast and saying, "Oh my god, these guys are just really hot." You mm -hmm. know, it's going to be a good time, and I was like, "Awesome!" You know? Yeah. And it went very well. You know, I was kind of surprised that I won. I thought it was pretty close. You know, mm -hmm. but man, it was exciting. I couldn't even sleep that night. I was just like fucking buzzing. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm the <clears throat> coolest. You know, it's funny too that you've been. I feel like you've been working hard on your roast jokes. Sure. Like making an extra effort on them, and uh, I'm I'm like not even in the. I'm not even remotely close enough to like want to go toe to toe and roast somebody. But that's the but, writing thing too. Yeah, yeah, it's the right. I just need to. <clears throat> do it more often but you're also so nice that i feel like it presents a challenge yeah you know what i mean it presents an extra challenge for you because you're nice some of your 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 materials kind of clean right <clears throat> and so you you're you're your roasts are creative you know they have to be that's a note i get a lot of cre they're creative you know but i had misconceptions about roasting because when i was seeing that i was like ah, you know i'm not really a mean person mm -hmm. this isn't really for me you know but then, you know, Jason Rouse told me, no, 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 it's about writing. Writing's what matters. If the okay. joke's good, the other stuff doesn't matter. The writing will shine through, and it doesn't matter if you're mean or whatever. So I took his advice on that, and mm -hmm. he was right. You know, if you yeah. write a strong joke, it's going to go, you know. Yeah. And if and if you're not writing a strong joke, it'll be obvious, you know. <clears throat> so it really does favor writing, you know. Yeah. And so, like, when I knew I was going against Dan, I had, like, a week. And so I wrote, like, 50 jokes, you know, and I had to go through them and just organize them and stuff and, like, you know. But, man, it was – because there's a, there's more risk in the roast because you're you're doing a semi-untested joke. You know what I mean? So like, I wrote it – I hadn't actually done any of those in front of a crowd before. So that's where – And there's you're... a lot going on because, <clears throat> like, in the processing of the, the – in the crowd's processing of the joke. Yeah. Because normally if it's just you, you're – Doing the joke, and if your timing is right and the joke's well written, it's it'll probably work. Yeah, the crowd's you know decent, but it's like with uh, with the roasted, it's almost like they have to hear what you're saying, and then they have to assess whether or not that's accurate mm -hmm. enough that it fits that person. There's like something else deeper going on with right. the roast because uh, on the lowest level, you're just doing a joke that's good. If you do it on the higher level. In my opinion, it's, if it's about the person, it gives it extra gas, of course, because that's right. what you're here to do. You know, but then you kind of have to explain some context sometimes too. Yeah, so it should be about it should be obvious when you look at the person that yeah. this applies to them. You know, so sometimes you don't have context. But then sometimes in the setup, they'll try to quit teach something. Dane does the, or you know what I mean, whatever for a living, and so he's the, you know what I mean. Even right. if they make that up. They'll throw out that premise. Yeah, like when I went against Sammy, I said that her uh, boyfriend ended up being gay because I needed that for later jokes. Mm. So I, I provided that context for future of my other ones. Because mm. without that, you know, we're not known people. So right. like they, you need to provide it or it needs to be obvious. You know? Right. What were some of the ones that you had for Dane? Oh, dude. The he first... can't defend himself here. Sorry, Dane. <laughs> No, dude. Uh, well, I actually put a bunch of them online. I think that was really Oh, really? Fun. Well, you remember when I went against Derek? I made that little video. Right. I made, like, two more of those with Dane. Oh, okay. You know, and then, uh, In I thought, here? No, no. I just did one at the Lucky Duck, and I oh, did one okay. uh, just on my phone. You know? Nice. Well, the one I did against Dane at the opener was that, um, you know, he looks like Butters from South Park if he grew up to be a lesbian, you know? <laughs> And yeah. then, actually, I had another tag after that, but people started laughing so hard that I just dropped it. So that was Smart. like I had to do that in the moment because I was like I had this other part to it and then so that was it ended up working out I guess so. talking about roast battle on a podcast is kind of weird because it's like yeah without the content without though. the yeah, it's a you had to be there thing But I will say this though if you're interested in doing writing it is necessary for you to write a lot of jokes to get to some good roast yeah. you know? and so like because I'm doing the tag mic and stuff I'm always writing jokes all the time it was easier for me to write all those roast jokes. If I hadn't had that discipline of writing jokes all the time, it would have been more challenging. You know? Yeah. So it's an advantage to write a lot. I mean, how do you write? What do you, what do you do you get up in the morning with a cup of coffee and sit in front of a laptop or like what do you do? You have a lot of notebooks in your car. Your car, your car looks kind of crazy sometimes. Oh, I've got all kinds of. You kind of look like a there. hoarder sometimes. Yeah, I've got all my speakers in there and just different, <laughs> like, and all kinds of like I have a gorilla mask in there. My license you know? plate is my car yeah. make model uh -huh. books. You know, like <laughs> fart cups. You know, I got all kinds of. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We oh. didn't bring those out on the last pod. 
Oh yeah, I should have brought those. I didn't bring them this time. I haven't really used the cups in a while mm. for the foley. But yeah. No, when I do my writing, generally I will just use. I'll do the Seinfeld thing where I have a legal pad mm -hmm. and I'll have a pen, and then I'll do like you know the morning pages, and then I'll do my write ten, and then if something comes along later in the day, then I'll make sure to note that in my phone. You know, like today before I came over, I wrote like two pages of just like what's going on, what's happening, just writing. You know. Oh, the coffee machines, this and that, <clears throat> just to get it going. Because I just feel like journaling, like almost, but yeah, but it's... but not as not as emotional. I feel like there's always things running around in your head, and if you write them all down, you kind of get it out of the way, so then your brain can think about other things. Hmm. Because then later in the day, I'll notice that part of the thing I don't generate material, but then if I do that in the morning, you wipe your hard drive, kind of. Yeah, you, like, get rid of all that, and then later in the day I'll notice that I'll get ideas. Hmm. But if I don't do that in the morning, it's like there's too much stuff going on. Do you write about, like, I have to do this today? We just do this. Is, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go hang out with Taylor, you know, and I'm going to go, well, what polo should I wear, you know, and I got to, um, how many espressos am I going to have today? And just whatever, <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, I got to get ready for Tennessee. You ever write and, about, like, your dumps that you take or anything like that? You ever include any of that stuff? Sometimes I'll do something a little more focused if I'm trying to, like... <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, I have this article idea. I was going to... The homeless people under 35 are going to unionize. That was going to be, like, one of my articles that mm -hmm. I was going to write for something. So maybe I'll write some notes about how that might go, like, some of the points of, like, the plot or something. Or maybe I'll um, create a character, you know? I'll be like... There's this guy who lives on Mars, and that'll be like my prompt. And then I'll be like, well, what's his, what's his day like? And I'll just start writing about what that is. But you purely do it as an exercise. Yeah, that stuff. It's like I going never, to the gym. Yeah, I never do anything with that. I never even read it even. But it's just I think you kick on the. That's crazy. Something is kicked on when you do that. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly. But then later it's on. Good in practice. I need to try something like that. Well, it's in the art of, or not the war of art. It's in the artist way. They talk about that. And I've really subscribed to that. So, like, again, the actual writing is it's just, like, nonsense. You know? It's like picking up a dumbbell. Yeah. Yeah. But then I do really notice it. Like, so I did it today around 10, you know, and I'll probably get some idea at, like, 4. It, right. It's really weird, you know. <clears throat> that probably helped the clear you out for the podcast, too. Yeah. You just, like, it's like warming up on something or I don't mm. know. It, and I also I don't need necessarily need to know why it works, but I do see a pattern. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um. <laughs> this is a wild transition, but I did want to do before I forget because I've forgotten and rem remembered like three times. Matthias, my dear, bo my dear boy, uh, good friend of mine. I don't know if you've known that me and Matthias have been friends since like seventh grade. He moved here from Portland. Um, we we we're very close, um, and he's just so passionate about a lot of things. One of the things that he's really passionate about is a supplement. Oh. that um, he's been begging to talk about this, and so I'm going to get it out because he keeps <clears throat> he keeps kind of doing that thing where we're hanging out, and he's like, so, dude, like, really, you really want to talk about this? And I'm like, stop. Like, well, we can't, we can't, you know, we like, actually, like, we, like we totally I think we can. should, I, no, I think we should get into it now for yeah. sure, but he's, we're, like, at the pool, and he's like, wants to talk about it, and I'm like, dude, save it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really want to get, so uh, it's it's called it's called Lock and Load. Okay. And it's a supplement that makes your loads huge. Nice. And yeah. And he's he's so passionate about it and he and it's just he thinks it's just the funniest thing ever. And so we're going to go and we're going to read some reviews cuz we were talking about reviews and this got me thinking about this. Oh, so yeah. there there's some reviews so <clears throat> uh Matthias uh give a it's sold out. <laughs> nice. It's always sold out. It's always sold out. So, g g explain to us a little bit more about this. Um, yeah, it's basically like a horse supplement. You turn your mic up a little bit. You take like uh, nine pills a day, and <laughs> four in the morning, five at night. Do you do you stuff them in your wiener, and that's why no, it's no. loady? No, you just you swallow them like a normal pill. Oh. But uh, it's this podcast, PKA, and they started it as a joke, and they started looking into it, and then got this guy Derek. More plates, plates more dates. dates. Have you heard of that guy? Mm -hmm. He like re he reviews like every protein powder and supplement. It's like oh. and like, he's it, like whether or not it's autistic level research. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> and uh, basically, they came up with a formulation to where you don't have to take like seven million pills, and you take it, and it makes your loads fucking massive. <laughs> and you 
shoot just fucking rocket rope. And this is like is just to be to be extra like you know to clarify uh is it more pumps like like you're like more glugs of you know like when you sh- when you're shooting you're like pop pop you know what i mean oh, the, like is it more a volume enhancer like there's so much so more so each one so if you if you shoot three or four or five low uh you know pulls if mm-hmm. you will you're get your your those are just going to be bigger it's not more of those yeah, I think you like, said more juice more, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, not... it's a the volume is insane Go back to that active ingredients. I'm taking half that stuff already. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm a sucker for supplements. I got to say, I actually started, I watched this video and they were saying if you want to get bigger loads, you got to do uh, beetroot and maca or whatever. Ma- maca. Oh, maca root powder? Yeah, so I started taking those this week, so we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll be as cool. It's just good for just like energy and libido. Yeah, basically. I mean, I'm it's taking all about zinc. This, I'm this, taking yeah, zinc, D, and then the salernium, whatever you say that. Oh, I've Sunflower never lichen. That one. This is a main thing. Yeah, that's like one of the and the L lysine. Oh yeah, I'm taking that one. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm probably gonna go out and just like start taking another four or five things after this. It's horrible. I always am like. Oh, what does this one do? I'll just start taking it for like a month and just see what happens, you know? I probably am taking like, I probably have like seven, no, I probably have like 13 or 14 different ones. You should write an article about uh, like taking all the different supplements to find out which one's right for you, you know? And it's like, Dude, my just si- think of the money you'll save on, you know, supplements that you don't need if you buy all the supplements up front and... Well, it's funny because I'm so uh, focused on saving money, but then when it comes to supplements, I just have no restriction. I'm just like <laughs> so like, yeah, dude, I totally need you know garlic. This you know I don't even like. Do I need it? I, don't I know. read recently that garlic is if you eat a bunch of garlic, the mosquitoes won't bite you. Oh, that, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Look at this review. I'm afraid my girlfriend will drown. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've never Just kidding, had... it increases volume and libido. Uh, I have more fulfilling orgasms. You'll be shocked how much yogurt you're, you fling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never thought... Yeah, I how much a... yogurt you fling is crazy. I never thought I needed more until now. Now I realize I've been lacking this That's whole time. That's what I'm time. saying. You know, that... See, they're creating the market. That's smart. You know? mm-hmm. I don't know if guys sat around and being like, dude, how's your loads? And they're like... Oh, like an alpha dog and i'll be like all right well how many glugs you got how many shots are you shooting be like not enough apparently Mm -hmm. it's always got to be more you know (laughs) yeah i think that too with that john holmes would always talk about that he'd say you know you gotta eat celery that's what would get you going Mm. (laughs) i came so hard my vision went black and i saw stars I've been slipping this into my girlfriend's coffee. She's also been spitting mad loads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how that works, bro. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if she's... Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you want to drop heavy loads, look no further. Dude, the reviews are awesome. But it's funny, though. Fire hose. Dear God, it's so much. <laughs> But again, when did this become a thing that's necessary? Oh, it's like, been going on for a couple of years now. Yeah, I do think, but it is something that's in the in the mainstream now that that's a thing that you should be considering. Like, you know, like there's, I think there was a time it was all about like tantric or whatever, and then there's all about whatever. Now it's like, well, you know, well how are your loads? I don't know, it just <laughs> seems silly to me. Like, It is silly. That's why it's funny. Right. But also I kind of get it. <laughs> Boys, I've been making so much cum, it's scary. I'm nearly drowning in it. Warning, you might choke or waterboard your girlfriend if you use this product. Happy coming, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same thought process. Happy coming, fellas. <laughs> also, are women crying out for more? Wait, what's this one? My wife commented on how my loads were the biggest she's seen. No, she's, she's ever seen. My shots were more powerful. <laughs> Loads came out with a lot more pressure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just keeps going, dude. It's crazy. Oh, I man. suppose if they show up one day and your loads are bigger, they think you're like, like them more? I don't know. I mean, they're like, doing better, yeah. It's, right. good for, it's fun for everyone. <laughs> I guess I don't really see a downside to it. But... Wait, I mean, it what helps, is this? What helps, is that one up there? Fight for there. the 17th parallel? Oh, this is like a podcast inside baseball thing. Um mm-hmm. uh, Trying to find the funny ones. Yeah. But yeah, it is interesting that uh 
You do last longer on it, too. That load size oh, is... Nice. And you're able to just go back to back, too. Like, all right, let's go again. Now, that would be valuable. Why not? Yeah. It almost has, like, a Viagra-like effect. It was crazy. It does it all. Mm-hmm. Lock and load, if you hear this, please sponsor the park. Dude, that'd be awesome <laughs> if they sponsored this That'd podcast. be a dream come true to shoot ropes for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm shooting ropes for lock and load. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It's hilarious. Bro, it started working on me in like a week. He loves to talk about his loads. He gets drunk and just starts repeating himself. Dude, the loads are so <laughs> big. I'm like, dude, fuck. It's like, man, I it's finally so cracked the code. It's so silly. I cracked the load code. Load code. Just one review. Five star. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they know all the secrets, man. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, how long have we been going to? We're, we're chilling here. Uh, 125. 125. You want to keep going or should we call it? Yeah, we do. Yeah, what, yeah. what do you have, What do you have written down over there, Mr. Ryder, Mr. Ryder uh, Pants? Well, I was just thinking about some of the things I've done since we got yeah, I write, last time. Yeah, I write two pages every day and I just don't even read it. I throw it to the sh- fucking, throw it away. Yeah, just I'm just a, so fucking, just, just write so much. Then a pile of gold and just go, man. <laughs> No, but I, I do think it's vital. Like, I mean, you don't have to write to be funny, you know, but, like, I think it's fundamental uh, mm. for some people's processes, and it's certainly for mine. You know? Yeah. You know, you talk to, like, I was listening to an interview with uh, Seinfeld, and I listened to an interview with Jeff Foxworthy, and they both said, you're a writer. Not, that, not everybody does it that way, but I was like, well, if I already feel like I'm a strong writer, then why wouldn't I lean into that, you mm. know? And so, again, but it's not necessary, you know, but to me it's not... Well, I don't know. I just feel capable in that area, so then I continue to put, you know, time into yeah. it. You know? No, absolutely. I was just, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> Quit bragging, dude. There's some guys out here like, I need to write more. You're like, yeah. I get, yeah, four pages for the morning? Yeah. It's light work. Well, and I feel like I need to write more. I yeah. feel like there's, I mean, I was, listening, again, I was listening to Jeff Fox where he's like, I sat down in my office and I wrote 200 punchlines, and I was like, damn, you know, I can sit down and maybe do like 10. You yeah. Know? So like that shows uh, that's his level of commitment to to excellence. You know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, I got to work on that. You know. What do you have on your little sheet there? I'm curious. Oh, I wrote um, the FPIA. I did that. I wrote the Absolute Show because I got to do one of the characters. Uh, what is explain to people what the Absolute Show is that don't know yet because it's oh yeah it's still up and coming. It's uh, Lucas's show there. Yeah. Lucas McCreary, and, uh, very funny comic from here. It's yeah, awesome. Liz is doing it. and uh, So Liz Blatt, Lucas McCreary, and then the producers are uh, Ike Rafferty and Colton Jones, and then they have uh, like a band and stuff. So it's like a um, similar to, well, it's Eric Andre-esque, I'll say, mm-hmm. but it's also, there's a lot of differences. But, but anyways, they asked me, or Colton asked me if I'd play this character of the dean of this uh, fraternity. So then I came in to do that one of the episodes, and that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up uh, murdering him at the end of the episode. <laughs> so they had to cover me in blood. Oh, pretty- I think I saw a picture of that. Yeah, so that was fun, yeah. you know. So it was fun to do something different because, like, I don't really do a lot of, like, acting. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, I mean, I was just, like, it was a small role, but I was like, oh, it was cool to be included in that. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it seems like a cool show. I need to go check one of them out live. Dude, they're really lively and like there's all kinds of crazy shit going on yeah. all the time and like So is it like they is it like I've been I'm curious about it. He doesn't know the he doesn't know like what's going to happen. Is it like flipped or he knows what's going to happen but the audience doesn't know? Well, there's like uh interviews, they'll do some kind of sketch parts and then they'll do kind of a little bit of uh like monologue. When you jokes. come out to the to the as the character, it's is it a surprise to the host? No, they were aware of the script and stuff, oh, okay, but uh, okay. it was a surprise to the audience because oh, okay. people are coming in. And I think some parts of it are a surprise to uh, Lucas and Liz, mm-hmm. but I don't know how much they know. But I know that um, they know kind of the frame of what's going to be happening. Yeah. So, like, in that episode I was doing, they were in a fraternity. And so uh, Colton played a character <clears throat> called Johnny Suicide, and he was uh, basically hazing them the whole time. Mm. And then my role was to come in and scold him and tell him that he better not do the thing with the forks again <laughs> and then i would leave you know and then over over time he would make them do more and more ridiculous things and at the end i just got fed up with him and so we went in the back room and i like beat him to death with a hammer <laughs> and i came out just like covered in blood and they decided well maybe fraternities aren't for us you know 
But then they had like 30 people come in and like togas and, you know, there was mm, band Yeah, yeah, I saw some picture of that. They were having people make sandwiches and like, yeah. so there's, it's very interactive too. You nice. Know? So yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, you know. Yeah, sounds fun. Well, there's a lot to it. I mean, that's a bigger production, you know. I mean, stand up, you just show up and you start doing the mic. I mean, there's a lot more moving parts and something yeah. like that, you know. It's more, more interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think we can probably wrap this, dude. Yeah. Um, Alden, I mean, th you've done so much for me, and I feel like you do a lot for uh, Austin. Oh, the comedy scene and open mic scene, and just we need more people like you. It's We were talking, too. We can talk before we, and you know, put a ribbon on it, I guess, about, you know, we, we, the other night at the roast battle thing, just talking about the, the process, the classic. Like, it sounds kind of uh, cliche to talk about, you know, again everybody talks about it but like falling in love with the process of something you know what i mean well yeah i, I heard a quote the other day from actually it was at the anderson mill pub of all places but the guys which said, described that to people people that don't know what that is it's, it's like people a, that aren't from here it's like a dive bar's dive bar it's it's, <laughs> it's rough you know but they have a mic up there and it's like mostly regulars and everybody's uh miscreants you know mm -hmm. but this guy came up to me and we were talking and he said um i heard a quote from he heard it from his father and that was uh you're not entitled to the fruits of your labor you're entitled to the labor mm. and that seems strange but like in this i feel like what really makes me excited is doing the work i mean obviously the shows is fun and stuff collecting pennies and making hummus dude it's, it's, <laughs> it's a it's a great time <laughs> <laughs> but also people don't understand that like why is it fun and they don't know and i go yeah and it's, it bothers people, I think, that that could be a thing that you could derive enjoyment out of. But I do, you know. Yeah. And they're like, well, could I get enjoyment out of that? Like, Absolutely. But but they don't, you know. So then they got to figure out what that is for them, you know. So for me, it's exercising absurdity, you know, living absurdity. I feel like doing stand-up is kind of like you don't, like, why is this fun for a long time? Like, especially at the beginning, like in the, where I'm at when... You know, like sometimes you get off stage and you you're like, I had fun, but it sucked, I, or what? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's well, it's hard, you know, and it's hard in the beginning, and it's going to be hard the whole time. I think some people they're more focused on the result. They want the adulation, they want the fun, they want the laughs, fans, everything. and yeah, fans. I want to be famous. I want this, and then there's other people who are enjoying. And this is not 100 percent for anybody, but there's people who are enjoying the doing. And I think those people end up having more fun in the long run because the result is not what they're so focused on. They're interested in that it's fun to do. Like like when I wrote that packet for that company that wanted to have me do their thing, I just had a good time writing it. And mm. then if I may or may not get it, but I like it wasn't a chore for me to sit down and write jokes, you know. All right. But, and I think that's where people – that's the difference between achievement and fulfillment, you know. The fulfilling for me, the fulfilling part is being able to get up in the morning and I have something I can I have to do. Like I have work to do, that hasn't always been true. So now when I I have a fulfilling thing that I like to do. Now on top of that, I also get the adulation and whatever and the fun and it's exciting and all that. But like that to me is a bonus. Being able to do this work is like so valuable. You know? Yeah, and it's hard it's hard to explain that I guess. I think some people understand that and some people don't, you know. I think that's kind of how I feel in a nutshell just because I'm doing all this stuff and, you know, not a lot of it is making me money and it's like barely paying for itself sometimes and it's just but and so I'm like why am I doing this? Like, why, but, don't I, why don't I just go get a job somewhere? But fulfillment is important. In yeah, I, I feel very fulfilled with what I do. Right. And um, and also you make money at it and it's, you know. But like people ask me, "Why do you do the Lucky Duck every week?" I've had people say that. Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, I, I like it." You know. And then that there doesn't need to be more than to it, you know. Yeah. It's not like I have some secret. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know anything, you know. But mm -hmm. like, I know every week I go in there and I don't mind it and I like it. Yeah. So like, I'll keep doing it until that's not true, you know. Yeah. And and I feel like I put on, you know, we I say we achieved comedy. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 got there. Some weeks it's not true. Yeah. You know? I mean, I had people complain. Uh, last night about different things one woman got mad because somebody was talking about fentanyl and and her brother had died from fentanyl she started screaming at the guy you know it's like ma'am you are on a picnic table right now and i was like you were on a picnic table in a patio bar right now but as that interaction's going on i was like this is perfect <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, look, this comic is getting a real lesson in uh, how to handle somebody. Yeah. It's one thing to read about it or think about it. It's one thing to be in it and be yeah. like, ah, uh, you're just with a, a pipe. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, this guy's getting yes. so many experience points. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> He's garnering so much <laughs> XP right now. Or like Don uh, previously, some woman approached him on the stage and he handed her the microphone. And he said, oh, that was such a mistake. I'll never do that again. And it actually happened again last night. And he kept it. Mm. I was like, oh, good. He, he learned yeah. that one. Don't hand him the microphone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but again, you don't find out until you do it. And right. Like, oh, I see why. That's a bad idea. You know? Yeah. So the, those things are available at the Lucky Duck for people. I need you know? to come back to the Lucky Duck and get beat up. I haven't been beat up in a little while. I'm one of the only people who stays the whole time. Yeah. So, like, I'm seeing it from a different angle. I've gotten some good little laughs there if people are paying attention. If you can, and I have a loud voice, luckily. Yeah. I feel sad. I feel bad for the comics that go up there that have a, a, a mousy voice, you know, or so, like need a better sound system or like a club yeah. to like really get people to pay attention. I'm like, hey, you know, and the people, I have a bassy voice and people are listening. Well, I think the. It's loud out there sometimes. It's not like you have to do that kind of room to be a professional comedian, but like there are certain lessons. I mean, there. really? Well, I think it makes you, it, learn, it teaches you certain things. Like, yeah. again, you're saying if I have a couple of little titters, that means it's good. Right. Well, and then you can take it to a. So, like, you might go to a really hot room and you can do anything and it's great and you think you're, you know, you're the best, but then you go in that room and only two or three of the things actually get a reaction. Maybe the other stuff's got to go, you know? Yeah. It, it's a real test. In some sense. And it's also a test of how you can handle a chaotic environment. You know? Right. And, again, for some people, that's just a no-go. Well, then don't do any bar shows, I guess. You it's know? like trying to tame a wild animal. Mm. <laughs> you know? But also, I go, in there wrangle every, them. I go in there every week and I go, well, I haven't really made it yet. I'm doing this. And so then I got a lot of work to do. So that motivates me. Right. But, if, but if I was doing some big show or something, I'd be like, yeah. I don't have to do the duck anymore. I'm already pretty good, you know. I don't need I don't yeah. need to work anymore, you know. So like in a way I do it on purpose to remind myself, no, no, you got a lot more work to do, you know. Yeah. Well, you're fucking amazing, dude. Thanks. I feel you. like I could, we could keep this going for 3 hours, so we, we probably could. We got to we got to fucking put a button on it. But yep. um plug your stuff and uh We'll eat some more hummus and get out of here. I will actually, we'll we'll end with some ASMR yeah, hummus. It's just some. It's good. Plug your stuff though. Oh yeah, okay. So uh if you want to read the blog, it is called A Sick Desire for Savings, which is, uh, I think, very funny. And on there, I'm I, uh, under my pen name, uh, Frank and Frugal. And then we got, uh, you know, my Instagram is The Mob Shop. You want to check that out? Uh, I'll say Taylor will be on the next Toxic Masculinity show at the Vulcan. So that's coming up August 3rd. All right. I have to plug stuff. Yeah, August 3rd at the Vulcan Gas Company. Mm -hmm. the toxic Masculinity Show. Just like it sounds. <laughs> and then I got the uh, Midwest Maniacs is going to be at the Velveeta Room on the 23rd. And tomorrow night, you probably won't get the time to see it, but I'll be doing Who Wants to Win $10. <laughs> 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 it's going to be good. Also, check out the Sidecar Junkaroo. They're going to make a 13th episode, or I should say edition, yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. hopefully get another article in there. Also, um, if you can still get your hands on one, uh, the Big Fat Cock Joke Book, not sold in stores. That's right. Not available in stores. Not available in stores. Yeah. Um, I might be uh, making some modifications to it and releasing a second edition. Can we do a hard? Can we get a hardback? Or at least an actual official paperback published? I think what I may do is I'll do a version two, and then at a certain point, I'll have a one that's a hardback that's like everything, mm. like all of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, special edition. This will be the coffee table cockbook, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's end on a let's end on a crunch. Oh yeah, dude. Let's end on a good crunch. Alden, thanks for coming on the podcast, dude. Yeah, I you. love you, buddy. We'll do this we'll every once in a while. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, throw you on your hummus. All right, crunch. thank you for everything you do, man. Yeah, dude. Follow Alden, guys. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm also gonna be back in Portland uh, f for Saturday. July 27th at the Hawthorne Lounge. Um, we're doing a metal show. We're also bringing Michael Ridley with us. He's going to do some comedy at the metal show in Portland. Tickets are limited to 100. It's a, it's the small room. I just kind of wanted to have like a party with friends, family, and like people that really like the band. Um, we haven't played in a while. We don't play there all the time. So come hang out with us. I don't know when we're going to be playing in Portland next. So if you're in Portland, you're listening to this, 
There might be some tickets left. Uh, it was getting close to like half sold out um, a couple weeks ago. So grab a ticket. Um, I'll have the link in the comments. Uh, follow Alden and come see us at the Toxic Masculinity Show on August 3rd. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast. Thank you, guys. Podcast. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.